there are quite a few different officers that an inmate has to check in with. And all those people, they all referred to me by my number. That advocate asked me what my name was. Because I'm not a thing. Because I'm, I'm a person with a name. And the first thing I told her was, my name's Joe. Joe was one of the first clients I had, and I had I was brand new, like sexual assault advocate. Um, most of my communication with incarcerated survivors was through letters, and I would read, you know, these words, and the feelings that they were expressing weren't all that different than any other survivor that I had worked with. Um, you know, the self-blame, the shame, the fear, the, you know, the trauma, all of that stuff just was very similar to everyone else that I had worked with. Um, the big difference being that, you know, their resources were so limited and their ability to self-soothe and their ability to seek out appropriate support was almost nothing. I went to a, a psychologist. And my plan is that no matter what, am I going back into that cell? Psych says, uh, okay, we'll get you moved. So I leave the psych and uh, here come the cops. And uh, he comes up to me and he tells me, he says, all right, let's go. I said, where are we going? He said, back to your cell put me in waist chains and put me back in the cell. Nobody would let me out. I was on top of my bed. I was on the top bunk. He grabbed my ankle and he pulled me off the bed and proceeded to rape me. And the second night he raped me, and the third, and the fourth. Getting in contact with Jessica, saved my life. Some of the things that I would hear in the letters was just a lot of feeling isolated. Um, and, you know, with Survivors who weren't incarcerated, you know, they could just pick up the phone and, and call. You know, we had a 24-hour crisis line. They could call whenever they, you know, felt like it. Um, but with the incarcerated survivors, you know, their access to that communication was so limited. And so there was something really powerful and, like, tangible about getting a letter, you know, and, 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 and you could see how hard they wrote or what their handwriting looked like. And... Um, and then being able to write back, it was kind of this opportunity to be very thoughtful in a way that I couldn't have been on the phone. Like in, in, a, in an immediate crisis, I was able to really be very thoughtful in, in my responses. Jessica was my advocate when I was assaulted. She was the person that uh, It wasn't my fault. I meant it. That was a, a turning point for me. As soon as she told me, I know you've been raped, I knew without a doubt, without and she could have never said another word to me. 
at that point, I knew that I hadn't done this. After the assault, I had been treated like a number. And uh, she asked me my name, and she touched my hand as a human being. And it really made a difference. My name is Joe.